Right, we are now in the home straight on our tour through the Tax Administration Act. Can you believe that some people make a career out of this stuff? Yeah, it can get quite exciting actually. Sometimes on TV, we see cases overseas of taxpayers being locked up. And it hasn't really followed in South Africa yet. There have been a few imprisonments and they have been mainly taxpayers who have stolen VAT or employees tax, not for actual tax evasion. But don't get too cocky about that. A lot more is to come in future years for non-disclosure on your individual returns. This is a presentation about what happens when there is non-disclosure in a tax matter. Watch this, it's quite frightening. So, firstly, when you don't submit a return. Right back in our first lecture we said that SARS goes and puts out a public announcement, the time has come to put in your tax return, and you, as the taxpayer, must then go and file a return within the permitted time. There are fixed penalties for every month that you are late in submitting a return. And what I can tell you about those penalties is that you are going to have to move heaven and earth to ever get them remitted. You're going to have to have a heart attack or something it's going to be very difficult to get those taken away. So those penalties are put there because you haven't submitted a return. But what about when you submit a return which is inaccurate? Then we have what are called understatement penalties. Understatement penalties work on a table and they look at the type of behavior, what, whether it was just an omission or negligence or intentional tax evasion whether it was a first or second time, etc. And the table then specifies the penalty. What's really frightening about all penalties is the end result, because in the end you have to pay the tax back. Then you have to pay the penalty. Then the two are put together for purposes of determining the interest. And if the tax case is a few years old, the interest can then double the matter again. So we are facing positions where people can pay three or four hundred percent more because they didn't disclose something and it was caught later. So these penalties are very harsh and what's very important is that they are very difficult to get away with. However, there is always a way to deal with a problem. Sometimes we are able to get penalties remitted purely on the basis that somebody has relied on a professional advisor. We have tax advisors out there and you are entitled as management of a business to go to a reputable tax consultant and say write me a formal opinion. If you have a formal opinion on which you behave on which you base your tax behavior and you have made full disclosure to SARS then the penalty may be remitted. But let's be careful that is not just phoning up Matthew Lester and saying, does this sound all right? I won't charge you for that advice on a telephone call, but then you can't rely on my advice. It has to be a properly structured opinion. Now, on top of the actual financial penalties, there are pages and pages of criminal offences in the Tax Act. And they lead to a very, very frightening position that on one or more convictions, you can be subject to two years imprisonment. And this goes even further, that the tax advisors are also um, in a position that they can go to jail for advising people on how to get away with their taxes. And on imprisonment, they can go to prison for five years. That's why people like me are quite scarce today. I'd rather wash your car than tell you how to evade taxation. Because at the end of the day, I can go to jail for longer than you can. So I have to be very careful, not only because of the reputational risk, but also the risk that I could personally go to jail. So when I write an opinion, I have to base it on all the facts. It has to be as near as damned correct and only really questionable by a court of law. And then you might get off the penalty. But I can't give you a prescription to evade tax and get off the consequences at the same time. Right. What happens? 
Now there is a tempering provision. For years, Sars has said, if you tell us about something before we find it, we won't impose penalties. Now that was a gentleman's agreement with Sars prior to the Tax Administration Act. It's now being put into the Tax Administration Act and called the Voluntary Disclosure Programme. You can find their unit in Pretoria, which deals with this. And this is an open invitation to taxpayers to say, at any time you can come forward to SARS and you can tell us about an under-declaration and we will pay back the tax and we will pay interest on the outstanding balance for as long as it wasn't paid, but we will alleviate you from penalty and criminal charges. But there is a provisio to this. You mustn't be subject to a pending audit or investigation. Now, if we go back to audits and investigations in previous videos that we've looked at, we say, we've got a notice from SARS. We have to get a notice from SARS of a pending field audit. Now, I can get that and um, suddenly decide, wait, I've got something I need to tell SARS. Then it's too late. You've already been served notice of an investigation. So you probably won't get a voluntary disclosure program relief on a case like that. Right, so you have to come forward and make a voluntary declaration and give four details of what has happened. And this has got a result that you're going to pay into SARS. You're not going to get a refund from doing this. And it, very importantly, it has to be done in the correct form and um, the, the correct forms have to be signed. In fact, it all has to be put in on e-filing. So, we have a voluntary disclosure. We have to provide sufficient information for SARS to assess the case. And then, if they give you a voluntary disclosure program relief, they will say, the agreement is that we will not pursue any criminal charges for non-payment and we will waive all administrative penalties. We're not going to waive, I must emphasize, the repayment of the tax and interest. Now, just the tax and interest can actually add up to a staggering amount owed to SARS. What you've got to look at with this is that if one then adds penalties to it, you're probably going to double it and still have the problem of potential criminal charges being brought against you if you're caught by SARS. So although VDP relief is quite expensive, it's a hell of a lot better than having to try and defend yourself in a criminal case or pay the penalties. So yeah, it's not the greatest, but it's certainly better than what would happen if you were caught with this by SARS. Now directors of companies should be well aware of this. We are seeing that the chairman of the company is today saying, hang on, are you telling me that there's a tax skeleton in this company? And you would say, yes. He said, well, I don't want that on my watch. Go away and correct it. The only way that you can correct a thing like that is through the voluntary disclosure program. Right. So once we've made our declaration, the voluntary disclosure program unit will contact you and they'll say, here is an agreement which gives the whole story of what you have done and the amount that is payable. You must sign that agreement and so must the senior taxation officer. And then you must pay in terms of that agreement. What that does is it buys you immunity from prosecution and penalties on what you disclose. What you fail to disclose is obviously not in that agreement. And consequently, if you've only made partial disclosure, you've only got partial relief against an ensuing SARS audit. Right, so what we're saying with this is that there it is, that's the Tax Administration Act and um, that's what you need to know for NDA. You could go and study this for the rest of your life and still never know at all. And it changes every year. I'm Matthew Lester of the Rhodes Business School. Thank you for your attention.